Saints of God, welcome to Sabbath School Devotion. My name, Edwin Estime. Now, there is a quote that says this. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. Now, I could actually kind of challenge this quote because I think most of the world knows that he exists. If I was to come up with my own quote, I would say this. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled is convincing the world to worship him without realizing it. Revelation 13 tells us that people will worship the beast saying, who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? But the sad truth is that many of these worshipers will not even realize that they have been deceived. This is what we're going to talk about today. But first, let's pray. Gracious Father, we praise you for all that you have done. We praise you for your, your strength, for Christ who died on the cross for us. Now, Lord, help us to understand this devotion in your word. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Let's read again in Revelation 13, verse 4 and 5. And they worshiped the dragon, for he had given his authority to the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it? Verse 5, and the beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. The timeline of the prophecies of Revelation 13 covers events that have already passed, as well as events that will be fulfilled in the final days. Now, yesterday, we talked about the Roman Empire and the role it played in attempting to prevent Jesus from fulfilling its his mission. And the next great power that followed was the Roman Church or the Papal Rome. The beast of Revelation 13 is an apostate religious power that rose out of the Roman Empire and grew to become a worldwide system of worship. There are several characteristics of the Papal Roman Church that we can use to identify the beast, but we're going to look at one for now. Blasphemy. Talking about his empowered beast, Revelation 13 verse 5 says, And the beast was given a mouth uttering haughty and blasphemous words, and it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. Now, in the New Testament, blasphemy is equated with assuming the privileges that are due only to God or to treat God as an equal. In fact, the Jews accused Jesus of blasphemy. In John 10 verse 33, the Jews answered him saying, it is not for a good work that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, because you being a man make yourself God. Now, of course, in Jesus' case, the accusations were unjust because he has all the powers and the prerogatives of God, including the right to forgive our sins. And that is because Jesus is God, or as he so powerfully expressed it, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me have seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? After his death, Jesus went up to heaven to take on the role as the mediator. And when we read 1 Timothy verse two, I mean chapter 2, verse 5, For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So while the Bible is clear on the fact that only Jesus can fulfill the role of mediator, the Roman church teaches that the priest is the mediator between God and and sinful humanity. But because the priest himself is a sinful human being, he cannot be our mediator because he also needs a mediator. Um, any human who claims to be God or to stand in the place of God is blasphemy. Here are just two statements from the Roman church authoritative sources. The Pope is of so great dignity and so exalted that he is not a mere man. He is as it were God on earth, according to Lucius Ferris. Pope Leo XIII boasted also stated, we, the popes, hold upon the earth the place of God Almighty from the great encyclical letters of Pope Leo. 
These claims show that the Roman church is the beast exerting his authority to speak great things and blasphemies as stated in Revelation 13 verse 5. The ascension of the Roman church to power marked the beginning of the dark ages. As her power increased, the darkness deepened. Faith was transferred from Christ, the true foundation, to the Pope of Rome. And instead of trusting in the Son of God for forgiveness of sins and for eternal salvation, the people looked to the Pope and to the priests and to his bishops to whom he delegated authority. They were taught that the Pope was their mediator and that none could approach God except through him. And further, that he stood in the place of God to them and was therefore to be implicitly obeyed. Anyone who would dare to deviate from the commands of the Pope would suffer the most severe punishment to their bodies and the souls of the offenders. And so the minds of the people were turned away from God to faulty, error-prone, and cruel men, more specifically to the prince of darkness himself, who exercised his power through the church. But even in the thick of darkness, a spark would candle the light again, and God's word reemerged. While the battle of the great controversy continues, our only defense against falling for the devil's deceptive works, deceptive tricks, is in the word of God. Brothers and sisters, in the pages of the Bible, we find that God is our creator, and therefore, he is the only one worthy of our worship. In the pages of the Bible, we find that we need no other sinful mediator besides Jesus, our Lord and Savior. In the Bible, we understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. In the Bible, we find that we will be victorious, but not by our might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. I want to thank you for joining me this week as we studied the seal of God in the Mark of the Beast, part one. We will meet up again next week as we study the seal of God in the Mark of the Beast, part two. If you haven't already, click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss a single Sabbath school devotion. As always, saints, keep the faith.